Greetings to all of the One Year in Mission students. I'm delighted that you have chosen to spend a year being a part of this wonderful mission opportunity. And I'm happy to participate in this video series offered through the One Year in Mission, or OYM, University. The topic of this video, City Evangelism and the Three Angels' Messages, is one that is very dear to me. When I was a college student, I appealed to several local conferences to sponsor me to the seminary, including the Greater New York Conference. My father told me if I really wanted a challenge, I should go to Greater New York. By God's grace, it worked out and changed my life forever. I had the wonderful and challenging opportunity to pastor and serve in evangelism in the metropolitan New York area for seven years. You know, some people love New York, and others, they just don't like it at all. Graffiti I saw in New York captures the challenge of living and working in large cities of the world. It said, concrete jungle, a hard life. Now, there are many good and bad things about New York, like any big city, but the people are there, people who need Christ and the hope of the Advent message. Since that time, I've always had a strong burden for the cities and New York City in particular. Jesus also had a burden for people in the cities. Let's consider for a moment the experience he had just a few days before his crucifixion. Jesus was being honored on his triumphal entry into the city. He and the large crowd of people were outside of that ancient capital of Israel. As they came to the crest of the hill overlooking the city, Jesus stopped. There was Jerusalem in all its glory, reflecting the light of the declining sun, the pure white marble of the temple walls and the gold-capped pillars created a dazzling sight. As Jesus looked down on the city, Luke chapter 19 verses 41 and 42, record his reaction and his response. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from our eyes. Jesus wept for the city, for the people of the city. He knew what was to happen in a matter of days. He knew the rejection of his mission and the terrible results. He did not become angry or resentful. He wept. He wept for the people of the city. He wept with unutterable sadness because of their lack of responsiveness to his love. He wept for what was to become of them because of their rejection of him as the Messiah and the truth. Of his word. Are we weeping with Jesus for the cities and people of this world? Do we look upon the cities of this globe with unutterable love as Jesus did? If ever there was a time to weep with Jesus for the cities, the suburbs, and people of this world, it is now. For centuries, most societies had been agrarian and rural. Most people lived in the countryside and sought a livelihood from the soil. But as we know, there are now more people living in the cities than in the rural areas of the world. One estimate indicates that by 2050, approximately 70% of the world's projected 10 billion people will be living in the cities. What can we do for the people of the cities? The book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 to 38, record Christ's ministry for those in the cities and the villages. And it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, 
pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. God is calling us to go into the cities of the world where the laborers are few and the harvest is plentiful. And I'm so thankful that you have accepted his call. God is calling us to have compassion on the millions and millions of people for whom he wept, died, rose, and intercedes today in the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. People for whom he will return in the near future at his second coming. He calls for us to proclaim his love, his righteousness, his three angels' messages, his warning to a dying world, and the powerful announcement of his soon second coming. He's waiting for us to take up the role as the uniquely called people of God, his remnant church, fulfilling the characteristics of Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. For over a hundred years, he has been asking his people to work the cities according to his methods. The spirit of prophecy is replete with instruction about the work to be done for the cities. It is a sustainable, careful, and comprehensive work, a work that unites every aspect of church work in its approach to reaching the multitudes of the cities, and it will receive God's blessing when done according to his will, with a humble heart. More than 100 years ago, God spoke through Ellen White to reinvigorate the work for the cities and speaks to us today in the book Medical Ministry. It's a powerful book. I love that book. I hope you get acquainted with it and read it. Page 304 says, There is no change in the messages that God has sent in the past. The work in the cities is the essential work for this time. When the cities are worked as God would have them, the result will be the setting in operation of a mighty movement such as we have not yet witnessed. As a people, we are not half awake to a sense of our necessities and to the times in which we live. Wake up the watchman. Our first work should be to search our hearts and to become reconverted. We have no time to lose upon unimportant issues. This is still God's message to us today. We need to focus on the important issues God has for his remnant church to address to the world. The world around us is crumbling and disintegrating politically, economically, socially, ecumenically, and in the natural world. I believe Jesus is coming soon. We're living at the end of time. The signs around us are ominous, and God is calling for us to submit to and be filled with his spirit so we can increase our work in the cities according to his plan. When that is done, we are promised that we will see a mighty movement such as we have not yet witnessed. It's so important that we pray that the latter rain will fall in abundance as we carry out the work for the cities. This is accomplished through revival, reformation, and a quiet submission to the Word of God, counsel in the spirit of prophecy, intense prayer for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and a willingness to obey God's commands. Now, how do we do this? Fortunately, we're given specific, inspired counsel to move forward by using Christ's method. We find it in the book, Ministry of Healing, another wonderful book that I hope you will be very acquainted with as a participant in One Year in Mission. And this quote is found on page 143 of Ministry of Healing. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior, number one, mingled with men as one. Number two, who desired their good. Number three, he showed his sympathy for them. Number four, he ministered to their needs. Number five, and won their confidence. Number six, then he bade them follow me. Let's follow Jesus in our personal spiritual growth and in all that we do for him. We need the Lord's power, not our own. 
as Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You see, the Holy Spirit's power is vital for direct outreach to the most challenging bastions of the devil's power, the cities. Now, I'm sure during your year of service that you will find the work in the cities is not easy. That's why it is so vitally important to have a daily connection with Christ through the study of his word and the writings of the spirit of prophecy and through prayer. And as you meet people and interact with them, you will find that if you silently pray, God will give you just the wisdom you need at that very moment. The spirit of prophecy, God's practical counsel for his remnant people, indicates a wide variety of outreach activities under the guidance of the Holy Spirit as you participate in one year in mission. I'm sure that you will be involved in this wonderful program with a variety of approaches, perhaps through centers of influence, local churches, literature evangelism, small group outreach, medical missionary work or comprehensive health ministry, health lectures, door-to-door -door missionary work, community services, and social work that follow Christ's methods, integrated media evangelism, counseling centers, reading rooms, or Adventist book centers, Bible studies, child evangelism, personal evangelism, and witnessing in a public and in a personal way, and many more methods yet to be initiated by the Holy Spirit. Whatever God calls you to do. Do it with all of your might, remembering that all of his biddings are enablings. We need everyone dedicated to a comprehensive and sustained evangelistic outreach that will replicate the urban evangelistic work being done in the city of San Francisco in the latter part of the 19th century and the early part of the 20th century which Ellen White called that activity a beehive of activity. In the Review and Herald of July 5, 1906, she wrote, During the past few years, the beehive in San Francisco has been indeed a busy one. Many lines of Christian effort have been carried forward by our brethren and sisters there. These included visiting the sick and destitute, finding homes for orphans and work for the unemployed, nursing the sick and teaching the truth from house to house, distributing literature and conducting classes on healthful living and the care of the sick. A school for the children has been conducted in the basement of the Laguna Street Meeting House. For a time, a work working man's home or working men's home and medical mission was maintained. On Market Street, near the city hall, there were treatment rooms operated as a branch of the St. Helena Sanitarium. In the same locality was a health food store. Near the center of the city, not far from the Call Building, was conducted a vegetarian cafe which was open six days in the week and entirely closed on the Sabbath. Along the waterfront, ship mission work was carried on. At various times, our ministers conducted meetings in large halls in the city. Thus, the warning message was given by many. Well, what a quotation from the Spirit of Prophecy. Now, we need strategic planning under the guidance of the Holy Spirit for every city in every country in every division around the world that will produce that beehive of activity and that's what you in one year in mission are to be doing helping to create a beehive of activity let's dedicate our lives energies talents resources and time to finishing God's work so we can go home now, in that wonderful book written by Ellen White called Christian Service, page 83, it indicates, and I quote, I was shown God's people waiting for some change to take place, a compelling power to take hold of them. But they will be disappointed, for they are wrong. 
They must act. They must take hold of the work themselves and earnestly cry to God for a true knowledge of the work. My dear participant in one year in mission, let's pray for a true knowledge of the work and guidance in initiating the greatest approach to reaching the cities of the world with the three angels' messages of Revelation 14. I want to encourage you to believe in the authenticity of God's holy word and the spirit of prophecy. God's word speaks to us in clear language that shows he is in control and that we are to follow his instructions and live life to the fullest. When we get afraid and hesitate in our Mission to the Cities program and projects in your one year in mission, remember the Lord and plead with him in prayer to open the way before you and before all of us. What a message and an understanding of scripture uh, we can bring to the cities of this world if we are willing to allow the Lord to work through us. What power will drive mission to the cities? The power is not the human beings, not the power of you and me alone. The power and truth presented is in the word of God, in the spirit of prophecy, in earnest prayer, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. The truth presented to the cities will portray Christ and his eternal saving love and the plan of salvation. <clears throat> it will show that an all-knowing God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have existed from eternity and into all eternity. It will lift up Christ's righteousness, his three angels' messages of Revelation 14, and his soon second coming. <clears throat> it will point people to the true worship of God and the keeping of his commandments, including the precious fourth commandment as an eternal sign of loyalty, the seventh day Sabbath, the capstone of his creative power on this earth in six literal days. You see, the sacredness and rest of the Sabbath is vitally important to the people of the cities. Our Advent message will point to the mortality of our lives and warn people about mystical beliefs and spiritualism. It will bring new life through an emphasis on healthful principles and health reform. It will share the magnificent sanctuary message pointing to the Lamb of Calvary and our High Priest who is interceding for us during the investigative judgment in the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. Christ, our Savior, our High Priest, it will portray the unique calling of the Seventh-day Adventist Church as God's humble, remnant people who proclaim with love a prophetic warning message as we unselfishly serve others. It will shield us from ecumenism and give us the power to proclaim the distinctive historicist prophetic messages of Daniel and Revelation. Our biblical message to the cities will unite us as a worldwide people and guard us from isolating ourselves from society and from each other. Our message to the cities of the world is that another city is coming, the New Jerusalem, a city of safety, hope, and refuge with God as its center. God at the center of all that happens, the real answer to all the woes and difficulties of today's earthly cities is the soon second coming of Jesus Christ. God is calling us to work the cities without delay. Listen to the counsel from the Spirit of Prophecy on this great cry for comprehensive urban evangelism and the use of medical missionary work or comprehensive health ministry in our approach to the cities. And I quote, it is in the cities of the nations that the gospel worker finds the greatest impenitence and the greatest need. And what God's servants do to warn and prepare men for the day of judgment must be done quickly. The conditions that face Christian workers in the great cities 
constitute a solemn appeal for untiring effort in behalf of the millions living within the shadow of impending doom. And this comes from the book Evangelism, page 25. I want to again affirm your decision to do something special for Jesus through the one year in mission. Through you, I'm sure God will make a difference, an eternal difference for many. Let's pray and ask the God of the universe to bless you in one year in mission as you work in mission to the cities. Father in heaven, we ask in a very special way that you will come very close to these young people who are part of one year in mission, giving of themselves to touch the hearts of people in the great cities of the world and in the rural areas. Lord, inspire and encourage these young people, not just with some strange ethereal uh, impression, but inspire them as they read your holy word, the Bible, as they read your instructions in the spirit of prophecy, as they earnestly and personally pray to you, and as they are open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give these one year in mission uh, participants incredible success through your power, lead them to the right people in the cities and in the rural areas and touch their lips as they explain their wonderful testimony of their relationship with you and also the profound prophetic truths of the Bible as people prepare for your soon second coming. Thank you for hearing us and bless one year in mission in a powerful way as we prepare ourselves and others for your soon second coming. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen.